Hello again, and this is the second part of the prophecy, A Whole Judgment. This part is the first part, given August the 23rd, 2021. The banner scripture relates to something the Lord said to me as I was preparing this word to publish it. He simply said, let them go to where they are appointed. Then the scripture is this. Then the Lord said to me, even if Moses and Samuel should stand before me, my heart would not go out to this people. Send them from my presence and let them go. If they ask you, where shall we go? You are to tell them that this is what the Lord says. Those destined for death to death. Those destined for the sword to the sword. Those destined for famine to famine. And those destined for captivity to captivity. This is the scripture that I said that I was going to read out in a little bit more detail. Jeremiah chapter 15 verses 1 to 2. And so this prophecy is the one that is overdue. It is, I would say, almost 10 days old now. And this is the one I was talking about when I said that the presence of the Lord was very hot over me. There are times when the Lord will come and we will just talk as friends. He, he, he will say to me and I ask questions and I say, Lord, what is this? And he tells me what a thing is that I am seeing or what it means. But there are times when the Lord comes with um, a very different presence. The Lord comes with such, um, I wouldn't call it aggression, but because he is so great, we need to understand that God is not this BFF person that has been taught to us. God is not this, this, um, this being that we can just approach anyhow. And I always share this on the master's voice that God is not just, um, a fun, fair person. You know, God is, is a wonderful father and he's a loving God, but he's not just someone we can approach anyhow and think that any approach is acceptable. And it, it, it simply is not. And I always strongly urge on this channel that the closer we come to an understanding of what is required when we stand as the people of God before God, God himself. The closer we come to actually being that pleasing people, that royal priesthood, and that holy nation that the Lord always speaks of, that his remnant and his bride will be. So um, the things that make God angry, some of the things that make God angry, if I can just share with you, is irreverence and also saying that the word of the Lord is a lie. The scripture says, despise not prophesyings. And the way that you despise not prophesyings is that you have to mature or at least grow or seek the Holy Spirit to help you grow into the kind of person who can... Uh, discern the word of God in a mature way. I've always said in almost every old video that I've made on this channel that you do not discern prophecy by your feelings. Your feelings are a totally irrelevant filter. So if you hear prophecy and you're upset, you're offended, you're scared, you're stressed out, those are not the prophet. Um, those are not the proper filters to assess a prophecy. The only person who is able to vet prophecy is the spirit of the Lord. And when the spirit of the Lord hears in you, hears the word of God, even if you do not like what you are hearing, even if you are afraid of what you are hearing, the spirit will witness and say, this is of me. This cometh forth of me. And so the Lord was very hot as I received this prophecy, and it is not an easy prophecy to share. This is the one that I said that I was about to bring it forth and the neighborhood erupted in noise and I was not able to speak. And the opening for this prophecy is what I just read in the previous video, Isaiah chapter one, verses nine and 10, that said that unless the Lord had left us, unless the Lord has showed us mercy and left us a very small remnant, we would have become like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And if the long story short version of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is that the, the, the city was apostate, basically whatever it is that God hates and whatever it is that God said, don't do, they were known for doing it. And finally the Lord came down in righteous indignation and he completely wiped out four of the five cities of the plain and Sodom and Gomorrah are the two most famous that we know. And so here is the prophecy and I will go through it and bring in other prophecies that are on the master's voice. Sometimes I remember the names of these words, but the words are now about 330 of them. And I do not always recall their titles, but as I read the word of the Lord, as I am moved to remember other prophecies that corroborate what is said here, I most certainly will share. The nation of America is under judgment. 
It is a whole judgment, meaning that I will judge the entire land and everything in it. I will fall upon the nation of America and everything that is called America, meaning everywhere the American flag is planted, everywhere that calls itself by the name of America, its islands, its protectorates, and its territories, every place that is named by the name of America will be judged by the whole judgment of the Lord. I shared before that the whole judgment is a judgment that you reach that has no part missing. So you're not missing any facts. You're not missing any details. You're not missing any material evidence. You've heard all the extenuating circumstances. You've heard all the excuses. You've put it all together and you've weighed it in the balance. And now you come to a perfect judgment that is aware of every single part of what the case is and has now delivered a judgment that is whole meaning it lacks nothing. I will judge the land. I will judge the soil itself for what it has seen and received into its mouth, flesh, bones, and innocent blood. So I have shared on this channel that if you have not watched or read the prophecy Blood to Drink, then you are missing out on one of the worst exposés of what goes on in the United States. There are many people actually who are just living in a cloud. They don't know what this nation is like. And yet the Lord always says that his people, the true remnant of God, the people who truly love God, meaning not the lip service Christian people or the misled Christian people or the people who are being taught by the greater modern church that, you know, God is just, God understands and God is right there for you. And God is just this guy who's going to move and adjust and adapt like a seatbelt to your lifestyle. You don't have to actually die. You don't have to pick up your cross and follow him. He is the reckless love God and he will follow you. The true remnant, God says that his people live what he calls, I think this is from Jeremiah the prophet, in the midst of deceit. Jeremiah said that, oh, I wish that my eyes, if my, if my, if my head were waters, that would explain why my eyes run with tears because my people, the daughter of Jerusalem, dwells in the midst of deceit. And that's basically where true Christians live today. There are many Christians who don't know what goes on there. I myself do not have the full knowledge, but I do have the added benefit of hearing and seeing directly from the Lord what goes on behind the American facade. And so innocent blood is something that is shed here a lot. Children are killed here in an obvious fashion, such as the children that go missing on the Amber Alert and the children that are put to death before they even come to life in the practice of abortion. But what many people don't know is that there is a stunningly lively trade in human trafficking trafficking and um, satanic ritual abuse and sexual ritual abuse abuse and murder in the United States. And that prophecy blood to drink delved deeply, deeply into the things that people do here. It delved deeply into sexual immorality and the practices that America not only is known for internationally, but champions internationally. America has single-handedly made the pride flag her second flag after the, the red, white, and blue. She has traveled the world over insisting that unless this lifestyle is given as much um, power and equal rights as the lifestyle that pleases God, any nation that is repressive towards this lifestyle will meet with the wrath of America. But America, you will meet with the wrath of the one who created all the nations. And if you are one who says, but the children of God are not appointed to wrath, I respectfully submit to you that America is not the children of God. It's just America. So the Lord said, I will judge the soil. I will take away the yield capacity and I will make the land dry and uncooperative. There will be drought in America. Gains will fall yields will fall, the crops will fail, and there will be mass hunger and even starvation in America. It will become a dust bowl, says the Lord. And so right now we're kind of stuck between extreme heat. This has been one of the hottest summers on record here in New York. It has been absolutely intolerable. And the only reason that I have the air off is out of respect so that the video is not noisy, but it's been extremely hot. And the Lord said in one of the prophecies, I think it's called 
desolations are determined, that um, the temperatures in America will be so hot that the news announcers will be trying to make a joke of it. It will be record hot temperatures. I brought this prophecy in 2019, record hot temperatures that scorched the land. And I saw at a future time, I was, um, I was, I was in the future and I saw that at that time, the sky of America had turned red and she was in a very difficult period of life. And basically the land grew nothing. The earth was so parched and so dry that it could grow nothing. So I really don't know what we were eating, but, um, the only thing that was growing was just this struggle corn, you know, cause corn is so resilient. So it was still trying to grow, but, um, it was, it was a hard time. And the Lord says that America will have mass hunger and even starvation. And I have brought the prophecy that I have seen ships come to the New York Harbor from Spain and perhaps one other EU nation. And they came here bringing clothing, blankets, basic needs for survival, and of course, food. America had become a donation nation. She needed other people to send her things. And that word is on the blog. So the Lord made this curious statement. We are the world, they said. You indeed will know the truth of that statement. So I went, of course, and I looked it up. And the minute you type that phrase into Google, it comes that We Are the World is this famous, famous song from the 1980s where it was, it was Michael Jackson, it was Lionel Richie, it was all the stars of the day. And they were singing and raising money in 1985 for Africa, especially the, the terrible, terrible famine that was in um, East Africa, in Ethiopia at the time. And America did this iconic song, all the stars were there and it was famous and there was a, um, a, a concert to go with it. And the, the, the tagline was, we are the world. And the Lord says that America will know that statement because the irony is that she once raised money for food for others. And now others will raise money for food for her. It says, I will judge the buildings. I will judge their monuments and their high towers. They will fall and they will be destroyed. And I shared in one prophecy that was showing um, the fact that President Trump would not have a second term, that he would step down and he would finish his term and come down off the podium and not have a second term as um, so many were prophesying. In that prophecy, I saw that the buildings of America and the monuments and the high towers were being destroyed by multiple nuclear strikes. So in that prophecy, I think it's called... Um, Prophecy of a Great Fall, Ezekiel 13. I saw nukes coming into the city. They were curving two and three and even four missiles at one time coming against uh, the buildings of America. And the Lord says that um, when America is judged, her judgment will fall so heavily that multiple cities in this nation, entire cities will be annihilated at the same time. So that is what he means when he says he will judge even the buildings. The buildings are not alive, they're inanimate. But the Lord says that because they are, they're swan songs or they're, they're monuments to the pride of the nation, how these skyscrapers soar and the skyscrapers in Times Square and everywhere else in multiple cities soar up to the sky as if they want to touch the sky. The Lord says that they will be humbled. They will be destroyed and removed from his sight. He says, I will judge the people I will judge the animals. I will judge every living thing within these borders. The boundaries and the protectorates of the United States will all face the judgment of the Lord. And so I have to say to places like Puerto Rico and other nations that are so eager to give up their sovereignty and just to be annexed to America as if you don't have your own identity as a nation that God founded. The Lord founded all the nations. He is the father of the nations. He's given you a name, but there are many nations that wish only to suckle at the teats of America. They do not want to be independent. They do not want to um, run themselves. And there are many nations who do want to run themselves and are being forced to act to act as basically satellites of the United States, judgment will come on all who are affiliated with this nation. I continue, I will judge the young and the old. I will judge the blind, the mute, the deaf, and the dumb. I will judge the righteous and the unrighteous. I will just briefly interject here to say, there are people who nurse very weird beliefs in Christianity. And if you're offended, you might just want to pause your offense and listen to what I have to say. 
In Christianity the world over, there are, there's an increasing departure from what the Word of God actually says. So the Bible shows, for instance, people who are disabled and people who, for instance, were deaf and dumb and blind, and they had to strive with able-bodied people just the same to get the Lord's attention. So blind Bartimaeus was sitting on the ground and he had been um, blind since birth and Jesus was passing by and not a single person said, hey buddy, the Savior's walking by, just hang on to my arm here and let me get you there. I'll give you special treatment because you're blind. In fact, Bartimaeus had to raise his voice and cry out, oh thou son of Jesse, have mercy on me. And people were telling him to shush because this is what people tend to do with people who are less abled than the able body. They tend to be discriminatory and they tend to be very rude to those sections of society, talking about things that they personally have not experienced. But Bartimaeus was not put off by the able-bodied people around him, telling him to be quiet because his disabled state was going to be a problem and a bother to Jesus. The story says that he cried out even louder, son of Jesse, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, he stopped and he said, come. And the scripture doesn't say, and then the nearby healthy young men helped Bartimaeus get to Jesus. It says Bartimaeus came to him. And so Bartimaeus relied on his own ability, whatever they were, in his blindness to find his way to the Savior, and he walked to his own blessing. In another place where a man was sick and wanted to get healing, he was sick of the palsy and he was on a bed, the Bible says that the house where Jesus was seated was full. So they couldn't come in through the front door and the bed was too big for it. And it says the four able-bodied friends wanted their friend to be healed so much that they dug a hole in the roof and lowered the man before Jesus. That display of faith is actually what caused Jesus to say, this is great faith. And he extended healing to the man. So when the Lord says that he will judge the young in this nation and people get upset and say, I don't believe this prophecy because Jesus, Jesus loves the little children. Think about the little children here who use four letter words when they are very little and their parents think it's cute and make videos and put it up. The children are in, I think they called pull-ups and they're twerking all over social media and parents think that this is funny. The children here answer back. They're extremely selfish. They look upon adult material and they become corrupted and therefore they're interested in procreation before they turn 16 years old. Of course, we can look at the government and the educational system who greatly help with that by exposing the children to explicit sexual positions, which is meant to corrupt them, but they tell them that it's just sex ed. The children of this nation are greatly, greatly, for the most part, separated from the father. And if you think that the Lord will not judge a person because he's four years old, but screams and screams and will not do anything you say and will not respond to anything the parents say, and the parents are desperately hoping that it's a phase, but it continues to age five and age seven until finally the child is actually the boss of the home and the parents are just living in his world. If you think that the father will not judge that, then I need not say much. Let us continue. The Lord says that he will judge every soul living within the borders of the United States. And those who are accounted righteous by him will be separated for a different outcome than the unrighteous. Pardon me. Pardon me. So the righteous will receive the judgment of the righteous and the unrighteous will receive the judgment of the unrighteous. Understand that the righteous also will be judged. And you can find proof of this in Psalm 1 where it says, the unrighteous shall not stand in the judgment of the righteous. So clearly all flesh will be judged by the Lord. And it is not because you love the Lord so passionately or you are really a true Christian. I mean, true to your core, you will still be judged. And I will speak more about that, I hope, if time allows and if I remember. The Lord says that the judgment of the unrighteous is punishment and death. But the judgment of the righteous shall be according to what the Lord determines. Tell them what things I have told you and let them be made aware of what the Lord has said. And so I will tell you what things the Lord has told me. The Lord has said that to people who are living la vida loca here, people who absolutely throw off the Lord God and think that God is not real, they bow down to gods of logic and science, not understanding that logic and science are, are actually disciplines that come as gifts from the Lord to help man make 
um, to help man make sense of his physical universe. But logic and science make poor gods because they do not explain the why of what we are. They explain what a process is, but they cannot tell you why. So all the big bang, big bang acolytes who say, oh no, this is how. Yes, you understand the how and you understand what you say happened, but it didn't tell you why all of a sudden there was a bang. That's easily explained in Genesis chapter one. When the Lord spoke, there was an explosion. And the first thing that was, which even science admits is a huge explosion of light. And that's because the first sentence that came out of God's mouth when he made the world is, let there be light. Those two dovetail. And so the judgment of the righteous being according to the de determination of the Lord, if I'm to share what the Lord has said, and they are all documented in prophecies, God has said that there will be many different outcomes for his people. There are people who will not be harmed at all by anything that happens in the United States. There are people who will escape and they will live secluded lives and they will still be alive at the time of the Lord's coming. But the vast majority of God's saints need to be prepared. I wouldn't say vast majority, but a very large number need to be prepared. And you need to understand that the Lord said many people will go home to him the old fashioned way. So the old fashioned way is where you lose your breath and you cross over the threshold from life into death. And that death will not only be the passing through um, the blessing of old age where you have lived out your years and aged in peace and your children are around your bedside and you pass away. The Lord has said in one of the prophecies that many will fight their fight with disease. So it's not that if you are fighting a, a disease and per, perhaps they give you a terminal diagnosis that it means the Lord doesn't love you and that the Lord has cast you off. The Lord said, um, if I'm to use his exact words, it went something like, um, many of you will fight your fight, but you will not succeed. And you need to understand that I view death very differently from you. It is just a sleep. And so I have prophecies that deal with souls. Um, I think it's called decree the souls or something. You just type the word souls in the, I'll leave all the prophecies. I'll watch this back and then I will come back and update the description box with links that you can click because much of what I'm expressing here is not yet in video format. And it's called Command the Souls. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Command the Souls. And in that series of Command the Souls prophecies, I saw uh, many souls leaving this earth. The Lord gave reasons as to why some people will leave the earth because he said that they're struggling in their Christianity. One example, one group of people are struggling in their Christianity and they can't stop sinning. And he said that these are people who continuously go through a revolving door cycle of sin. So they sin and they repent and then they sin and they repent and then they sin and they enjoy a period of sin and then they come back to the Lord and they enjoy a period of holiness and this is actually known in legal terms as recidivism. Recidivism is where a person is basically an unrehabilitable repeat offender. Those guys who just keep selling crack. You put them in for a year, they're out the next the afternoon that they come out there at the crack dealer smoking some crack and then getting some for sale. These people have shown that they can't be rehabilitated and so they're, they are recidivist. And so the Lord says that recidivism would be the cause that Satan will take many souls if he was to leave these people who have so many gates open in their lives that they cannot conquer sin. And so the Lord says that in a period where these people are walking with him and doing well, he will take them and bring them home. Much the way a mother takes a child who plays too close to the road, she finally grabs his arm and says, you sit by me. That troublesome child in church who keeps fidgeting, that's usually the child that gets to sit by the mother and the others can sit with their friends. So it will be something like that. The Lord says that some of his people are very righteous, pure, and holy, and that he will bring them home so that they do not have to see the things that are coming upon the earth. So I'm talking about human things and non-human things. I'm talking about wars, rumors of wars, sicknesses, and diseases, but I'm also speaking about the coming of the Nephilim. If you have not heard this and you think that this is just folklore, Visit the master's voice. The coming of the Nephilim and other non-human creatures that will wreak havoc upon this planet, the Lord has said to me, especially concerning older people, celestial, I cannot allow my faithful servants to gaze upon the giants and to gaze upon the unclean things that will come. And so he will take them home just um, out of his love. The Lord says that death is just asleep. And so that we should not be like people who have no hope because we know 
that they will be raised to life if they pass away in the Lord. So the righteous judgment, the judgment of the righteous will be very different. Some will live and many will escape and many will be protected by the Lord. But just like Hebrews 11 is divided into two parts where there are some who received their blessing and some who received victory over the states and victory over this, there were some who did not receive victory over the government. They were put to death by the government. And in fact, here in the United States, that is what I saw happen. There is a prophecy on the blog that is not yet made a video, a very bitter prophecy. It is called pogroms in America. That's P O G R O M S pogroms in America. And what I saw is that due to technological spying by the very devices that are firmly embedded in our lives, our tablets, our smartphones, our laptops, the corporations of America will be very powerful in the end days. If you think they have power now, you do not understand what I'm saying. They will be as powerful as sovereign states. So as I saw them, they had standing armies, and I'm not going to name them in this prophecy. When I make the video, if the Lord gives me leave to name them, I will name them. But if you want to see their names, you can visit the blog and read the prophecy, Pogroms in America. And what I saw is that during this time, those who preach and speak the word of God are greatly spied on. Anyone who is a patriot, the Lord doesn't call them patriot. He simply refers to them as sons of freedom. And sons of freedom is not limited to the United States of America. There will be people who will fight this, this NWO, um, this um, rising one world system to the death. Literally, they will refuse to give up their freedom. And the Lord calls them sons of freedom. And he says that the blood of the sons of freedom will flow as freely as the blood of the marchers here in the United States. And so I saw people who speak against the government, people who complain about what is happening now, the unfair changes in the abrogation and in sudden shifts and chopping up of the laws and constitutional rights and people who preach the name of Jesus and love Jesus and advocate Jesus and have channels that preach about Jesus and the love of Jesus. These people were all listed a long time ago when I saw into that future time, that future time was absolutely horrible and you could die for anything. And when I say anything, I mean the word, any married to the word thing, forming the word for absolutely nothing at all. You could lose your, your life. And so I saw these black clad policemen would come to the house of someone who was a known blogger or a known channel haver, and they would grab you and you wouldn't even get, um, you wouldn't get a trial. You wouldn't get anything. You would just be told that you had offended against the state and you were 100% guilty and they would take you and behead you. So as I was looking, the Lord showed me piles of corpses. So just piles of bodies that were approaching just the point where people begin to decompose. And none of these bodies had a head. They were just on some patch of unnamed red dirt here in the United States. And they were not afforded a burial. And these were people who were righteous. These were the faithful people who loved God. They were beheaded here in the United States under the rule of the beast government. And so I am telling you what things the Lord has told me, and I'm following an instruction to let them be made known of what I, the Lord has said. I continue with this prophecy, a whole judgment. I will test the bowels of every living person in America, and I alone will determine if they are righteous or unrighteous. I will test them with war and invasion. I will test them with hunger and thirst. I will test them with shortages and lack of every basic commodity they depend on. The standards of living in America will grossly change, and the word you should use is plummet. Standards of living and everything else attached to basic human daily life will plummet, and America will moan in despair because of the regime of wickedness, hard-heartedness, sin, and pride that she has reigned towards me, the Lord God Almighty. And so here, when the Lord is talking about the aspects and the factors that will test people. I have a prophecy on the blog, blog and it's called um, sword to the kidneys. And what the Lord basically said in a sword to the kidneys is that he will allow various hardships like the war, the invasion, hunger, thirst, shortages, lack, and lack of commodities. So things totally disappearing from the shelves. First of all, things will spike in price. So we're already seeing that. 
the way the Lord showed it to me in different prophecies is things will spike in price. And I saw a major supermarket, such as a big fancy one. It's a big fancy chain that has been expanding very, um, strongly in recent years. Um, usually you find that chain in Manhattan. And, uh, I saw that by night they were changing the sticker on the food. So it would be one price one day. And then at night they would hire illegal labor to peel off all the stickers. And then in the morning, the employees would come in and think, oh, this is new stock. And they repriced them with whatever the stickers had been set to, but food rose sharply. And I saw a woman very angry in the store because she had many children and they were costing her in milk the the young you know the milk that young children need to grow she was very angry and she was angry with the cashier and the cashier was also angry in their heart like i'm not responsible for the price lady but she was just angry because she was living in a society that suddenly was costing so much for basic things that children need and so um these things will test the heart in many ways because when we as people don't have what we need we murmur and we complain and eventually the murmuring and the complaint turns into wailing and then we begin to accuse the lord and so the lord says that all these things will test the bowels or the kidneys of everyone living in america and he will be able to see who can really endure hardship as a good soldier of christ or not and so he says, I will judge the high trees and I will judge the lowly shrubs. I will judge the thorn bushes, the thistles, the thorn trees, who are the false prophets and the religious leaders that have led this nation into apostasy. So apostasy is not where you don't know about God and you're not interested. Apostasy is where you totally know about God. You have a history of being very well versed in the things of God. And then you decide to depart from the Lord God and go your own way. You begin to show disinterest in pleasing God. You are not interested in walking with God anymore. And therefore you fall back into the same state as the first person who doesn't know God and doesn't care to know God. An apostate is one who completely does a 180 and turns their back on the truth of the Most High. And the Lord says that America is an apostate nation, a bastard state that rejects all discipline, that is turned away completely from the teaching of the Most High God. He says that even when his voice is thundering against you, you refuse to repent. And for this, you are judged and you will be judged. Unless the Lord had left to us a small remnant, a holy people, we would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah. We would have been utterly destroyed. We would have been wiped away. And so we understand that, of course, there was nothing left of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was completely annihilated. And I have said that the Lord says that that will be the ultimate and final fate of the United States. He has said, I will remove America from among the registers of the nations, and she will no longer be found on the list of countries before me, which means like Atlantis, there will be nothing. I will judge the homosexuals. I will judge pedophiles, fornicators, those who live as if they are married, but are not. I will judge every adulterer and I will judge those who engage in self-stimulation and those who defile their eyes and ears with pornography. I will judge those who have foul tongues and those who listen to foul music and use and indulge in other things that defile the heart. I will judge every mocker and scoffer and I will judge all those who ind indulge in idolatry. So all of those who are Satanists, uh, Freemasons, Rosicrucians, which was new to me. I had to Google that one. Eastern star and everyone who is part of an order, everyone who is part of a brotherhood, everyone who is part of a fraternity or a sorority, all who have bowed down to false gods and idols or lifted up oaths and taken covenants to gods who are not me. Anyone who has worshiped or sworn a covenant or an oath to a false religion followed a false God. And this includes religious institutions that require you to take a vow to the institution itself instead of the Lord God. All of these shall be judged without repenting. If you do not repent, you will be found guilty of idolatry and you shall be judged. So the Lord says that the judgment of the Lord will cover all those who are part of institutions, who are part of brotherhoods, covenants, cults, where you take a vow to be a part of something that is not the Lord God. You have no reason taking vows, oaths, and covenants to anything because your whole self, the whole of the temple, your heart, your mind, your substance, and everything, every part of your limbs belongs to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has paid the price for every single soul on the cross. You cannot die 
double debit. He cannot pay for you. And then you take the card that he has paid for and go swiping it as part of the Freemasons or the instant star or whatever the Rosicrucians are, or part of fraternities and sororities that have grabbed so many young people today. If you are a member of these institutions and you see this video or you hear my voice and you wonder who is this person saying these things, I am speaking to you in the full authority of the master, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you are to come out from among these and be separate. Your heart belongs to the Lord alone, and you should not have any oaths or covenants before him or after him. He is the Lord, your God. The Lord says he will judge America with famine. I will judge America with war. I will deplete your food sources and you will hunger for bread. I will reduce your industries, manufacture, production. America, you will dwindle, decrease, and go down. And another will take your place in the rankings at, as number one. You will become a footnote, an easily overlooked period at the end of a very long sentence. You have had your chance. You have had your run. Now your judgments are upon you and no one in this land will escape the eye of the Lord. Again, he repeated the scripture. Unless the Lord had left to us a very small remnant, we would have been like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. This is the word of the Lord. At the bottom of this script of this prophecy are specific scriptures. And one of the scriptures is Jeremiah 21, nine, where it says his life will be as a prize to him. So this is Jeremiah saying, hearing from the Lord, how he is going to judge Israel and how avengers are going to come to the nation. And that so many are going to be taken captive. And so many are going to be put to death that the righteous should understand that when these things fall upon the land, when they see themselves being kept by the Lord, them and their children or them and their loved ones who truly follow God, they should understand that their lives are being given to them as a gift and they should greatly praise the Lord. Excuse me, please. And then 1 Peter 4, excuse me for the noise. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try you as if some strange things had happened to you, but rejoice when you partake in Jesus' sufferings, for when his glory is revealed, you also will be glad with exceeding joy. For if people reproach you for Jesus' name, then happy are you. The spirit of glory and of God is resting on you for on their part, he is spoken of so evil, but among you, he is glorified. If any man is suffering as a Christian, he should not be ashamed of it, but let him glorify God because he is suffering for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begins with us, then what will happen to those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? If the righteous will hardly be saved, meaning that they will be escaping through very thin doorways of opportunity to keep their life, then what will happen to the ungodly and the sinner? And here in Proverbs 11 31, it says, behold, if the righteous will be repaid for their actions in the earth, how much more the wicked and the sinner and so I have delivered the word of the Lord. The last message was this. If you will not be chastised, meaning that if you will not accept the rebuke of the Lord and change your life, repent if you are not born again, repent of your sins and give your heart to the Lord. If you are born again, but living in any form of compromise, cry out to the Lord and you also repent and ask the Lord to give you the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit to break free of chains and overcome. He says, if you refuse to accept chastisement where all should partake, so every soul should be willing to be tested by the Lord. The testing that the Lord is speaking of when he says he will judge means that he will test first the heart. He's not going to test your bank account. And he's not going to test what you say about yourself. The Lord will test first your heart and your heart will do, 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 do. without your input. Your heart will print back to the Lord, a printout sheet. I am an unfaithful heart. I lie. I steal. I fornicate. I, I practice alternative sexual lifestyles and I'm not ashamed. I'm loud and I'm proud. Your heart will give God a perfect readout. And from that readout, my friend, God will render to you each soul in this nation and around the world, a whole judgment, meaning a judgment that is perfect 
based on your printout, lacking nothing is how we will be judged. You and myself sitting here speaking these things. And so these are the things that God wants us to know, not only for this nation, but all the nations. And I will stop it here. The Lord will test and question every heart. So prepare for the exam that is to come. If you have hearing, hearing ears, may you hear. This is the master's voice. I have two other channels, La Voz de Señor. That's my YouTube Spanish channel, and the links will be below. I have another channel on Rumble. I'm inviting you to join and follow and support those channels so that they grow because it is not about viewership for me. These are not the easiest things to say. I have no idea where these videos go, and I have no idea what the outcome of the thoughts that others who watch them have. And indeed, I'm not troubled by those things because I'm not here for likes and all of that. I am here that the Lord's word be made known and that the people of this nation and the people globally be aware. Those in the islands, those in um, places like American Samoa and Puerto Rico, this word affects you as much as it affects somebody in New York and Ohio. So please pay attention, share, subscribe, and like if you want to. And until I see you again, I am Celestial. Take care. God bless you and goodbye.